You know, I said Warriors Orochi was my favorite Warriors title of all time, but I do believe that Samurai Warriors does a better story than Dynasty Warriors. So when I heard they were doing a story-heavy Samurai Warriors game, I got excited. I have to fucking put these away now. The PS4 has been a really great console for Warriors games. I really enjoyed the fourth entry to Samurai Warriors. I didn't play much of the third because it was only released in the West on the Wii, but Spirit of Sonata is the game we're talking about today, which uses the same engine as the fourth entry, so that's kind of why I went into that little tangent. But more importantly, did I enjoy this entry? It's complete enough to be its own entry, kind of like a big standalone expansion to the main entry. This only follows the Sonata clan specifically. From its time led by Masayuki Sanada under the command of Shingen Takeda to its final fight against Ieyasu Tokugawa. So how did this entry do in that regard? Well, let's find out with the first pro. Just like previous Samurai Warriors games, the story is much better executed than in the Dynasty Warriors series, but this game goes above and beyond that of the usual Samurai Warriors expectations. Now we have more depth to the main characters that we see throughout the story. The Sanada, the Takeda, the Tokugawa, and the many officers that join them. The little events that happen throughout the game have a heavier emotional bearing to them, like that time Yukimura had to be sent away to the Uesugi as a hostage. Yukimura, the role of a hostage is not an easy one. Brother, thank you for your concern. But still, no, in fact, precisely because of this difficulty, I know I must be the one to go. Indeed, it is as Father says, in order to gain their trust, it must be you. I know Father always has a plan. I must be prepared to risk my life to help carry it out. The six coins on our banner represents the fee to be paid to the boatman to the afterlife. They indicate our willingness to die at any moment. As a warrior, I cannot be scared to give up my life. Yukimura, give me your hand. Brother? Half would not be enough to pay the boatman to the afterlife. Then we cannot die yet. Brother. The Sonada way is not to merely throw our lives away. That is what I believe. I think our father feels the same way. Father? You and I must take half each so that we do not forget this fact. Yes, brother. Stay safe. You too, brother. Oh, fuck! Right in the feels. You feel a direct connection to each of the characters that pass through the main story. When one dies, it actually hurts. The main character's reaction flows right back into you, like, No, it's fine that they die. I'll get through it. I'm fine. No, you're crying. I couldn't believe how much I actually wanted to know what happens next. Even though I knew a majority of the story thanks to my time with the main series, I still wanted to see how these characters would react to it. We all know that Yukimura dies in the end, but how does Kunoichi feel? She might be a fictional character to the game, but Koei has always made it seem like they had a special relationship, not quite lovers, but more than just friends. I also have to say it's nice to see that. Kunoichi isn't portrayed as a I love Yukimura so much I can't let him know because he's my master. Oh senpai, notice me! Instead, Kunoichi is a loyal ninja who won't let anyone outdo her. She isn't Yukimura's girlfriend, so back off, Chacha. She's Yukimura's number one ninja, so back off, Sasuke! All in all, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Spirit of Sonata's story. Come! Spirit of Sonata was the first title in any Warriors game to feature aging characters. I've always found this a little weird, especially when someone like Nobunaga looks younger than someone like Kanbei, even though Nobunaga is 15 years older than him. The thing is that only the very main of characters actually age. Yukimura, Nobuyuki, Masayuki, Ieyasu, and Hidetada are the only characters that actually age. And the thing is, I don't think they age perfectly. When Masayuki passes away, I feel like Yukimura should be an adult, not a teen. I wish there was more stages to these characters' ages. I also wish other characters aged with them. Chacha even only has two stages of age. Apparently when Yukimura becomes an adult, she doesn't. Kunoichi and Sasuke look the same when Yukimura was just a kid as they do when he's an adult. Plus when Nobuyuki, Hidetada, and Ieyasu age, it's just their facial features and hair. While Yukimura and Masayuki get new costumes as they age, it almost feels like a cop-out to me. If all the other characters 
actually aged, this would feel much more realistic and the story would have even more impact when certain characters die of old age, rather than just on the battlefield. Hopefully Koei Tecmo includes the aging system in future games because it gives so much more of an impact to the story. Pro. Hacking and slashing through the battlefields aren't the only thing this game has to offer to the players. On top of the usual large-scale maps, there are smaller exploration maps akin to that of the first Tokiden or Monster Hunter. In these stages, you go from area to area, collecting materials and defeating enemies along the way. Each exploration area has multiple goals to achieve, killing a specific unit, finding a specific item, exploring the entire map, and getting every item available to the exploration area. Once you complete all four goals, a fifth one opens up to kill a famous officer. In these exploration areas, you can also run into a supply soldier carrying a rare accessory. But that's not all you can do. There are side quests with random people in the town area. Usually go and kill somebody or bring back X amount of this item. Then there's fishing, farming, training, smithing. It's all here. You can really get lost in the extra little bits of the game, but they lend a good hand in extending its stay in your PS4. Come! One of the things I love about Warriors games is the DLC that brings so much nostalgia to the table. Dynasty Warriors 7 and 8 had old costumes going way back to Dynasty Warriors 1 for some characters, and some random extra ones. Warriors Rochi 3 had all the old ones too, even for Samurai Warriors characters, but they also had swap costumes for the Samurai Warriors and guest characters. I was also slightly disappointed that Samurai Warriors 4 had only the original Samurai Warriors costumes. No DLC for Samurai Warriors 2 or 3, but at least it carried over to Samurai Warriors 4, 2, and Empires. But not to Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sonata. Why? Why weren't these costumes carried over? It's not like it's a whole new game on an entirely different engine with fancy schmancy graphics. There's pretty much no excuse. If it carried over to Samurai Warriors 4 2 and 4 Empires, it should have carried over to Spirit of Sonata. Pro. With a spin-off like this, I wasn't expecting new characters, really. To make the story that much more concrete, Masayuki Sanada had to be made a playable character. But also making Sasuke and Chacha playable characters was an awesome addition. Plus giving Yukimura new movesets for his younger and older versions. Then making Katsuyore and Hide Tada playable even though they used generic officer weapons was pretty cool too. These new additions really made Spirit of Sanada feel more like an Extreme Legends expansion on top of Samurai Warriors 4 2. It might not reach the same feeling as a fully new game, but the additional characters and execution of the story are very welcoming. I actually really enjoyed playing as Sasuke and Hide Tada, and Masayuki's moveset is pretty badass, all things considered. When I saw Chacha in the promotional material, I never really looked into her. I didn't even know for sure if she would be a playable character. When I switched over to her and played a couple stages, I thought she was an awesome character. Her weapon is a fucking hair clip. Like, don't mess with me, bitch, I'm a fucking stabby in the jugular before my hair falls out. God! When I started up this game, I never expected it to be so easy to complete. There are no trophies kept away from you by difficulty walls, though amping up the difficulty can make it easier to get certain things and make certain stages more fun. I thought this was going to be a simple platinum once I took a peek through the trophy list, but that was not the case. This game has the same trophy as every other Samurai Warriors game on PlayStation, but it's hidden behind another trophy, completing the vault. Now again, this is deceivingly easy in thought, you just have to watch all of the events throughout the story, which is essentially playing through every stage. Then you have to hear every music track, which is, again, playing through every stage. No, the biggest thing is all of the battle objectives in every single fucking stage. Some of which won't even trigger unless you're holding square the entire time you're playing the stage, while you're also hopping on one fucking leg while Mercury is in retrograde. Whatever the fuck that means. And then when you fucking trigger it, you have to complete them. If you don't complete them, you have to figure out how the hell you triggered it in the first place, again, so you can attempt to complete it. 90% of the objectives are actually pretty easy to complete. The annoying thing is actually getting them to trigger. Plus, fucking Sekigahara or whatever, where there's multiple objectives you can only complete if you're playing as a specific character, so you have to fucking replay it over and 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 over All in all, do I really have to say what my overall thoughts are? With all that I've said, yes, I've yelled a lot more at the cons in this review, but keep in mind, these are fairly nitpicky things. The aging of the characters, the DLC not carrying over, and that one fucking trophy I still haven't popped, but probably will eventually. There are many positive things to enjoy in this game. The same old, same old gameplay we all love about the Warriors games. The incredibly well-conveyed story is a delight to play through. To be honest, I'd love to see more entries diving into the various clans. I think the next one I would pick would be the Oda. So all in all, my time spent with Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sonata was probably the most fun I've had with the Samurai Warriors games since two. There hasn't been anything wrong with them since then. It's just been my mindset. 
Being a collector, you don't get that breath of fresh air anymore when you buy a brand new game. It's mostly just, hey, this is slightly different than something I've already played. But with the way the story and the characters were handled in this game, I got hooked so quick and so hard. That's why Spirit of Sonata gets a 9.5 out of 10, a near perfect score again because of the nitpicking. If they had just carried over the DLC from Samurai Warriors 4 and had the other characters age along with the main ones, I feel like I might have actually given this a 10 out of 10. For what it is, as a spin-off of the main series, this sparked my want to go back and finish all those Warriors games that I still haven't. Well, except for getting the Platinum for Shin Sun Goku Muso 5 Empires. Just, no, sorry. Anyways everyone, thank you for watching the video. Let me know your thoughts on Spirit of Sonata down in the comments. And what did you think of the new intro style and the heavier editing? Give this a like and subscribe for more videos on the 15th of every month, and I'll see you all down in the comments.